How are you doing? Um, I'm hoping that you're all okay. Um, we're okay here, still um, staying in mostly and um, trying to keep safe. Um, but I really wanted to do something new for you on our video after our catch up chat and wanted to do a little bit of science. So um, thought of growing something as we were doing plants this term. Um, so thought growing something might be quite nice to do. And if you can learn how to harvest seeds from things uh, like tomatoes, which is what we're going to try and do today, then you can grow your own plants. So you can grow your own tomatoes, allegedly. So this is something I've never actually done before myself. So this is something new that we're doing together. And um, I'll show you the inside of this tomato. This is um, a normal salad tomato. And you can see lots of seeds inside here. Um, and I'm going to show you how to harvest those seeds from the tomato um, so that we can grow them. Um, this is a tiny cherry tomato. Um, you know how much I like experimenting with my science. So I'm going to harvest some seeds from a cherry tomato and harvest some seeds from a salad tomato and see which grows sooner. These apparently are really easy and really good for beginners to have a go with. So let's watch. Um, I have all of my equipment here. I don't know if you can see on the turn around the computer. So I have my um, board here um, where I have, I've got two little plant pots already. This is um, something hopefully you can just get out of your fridge if you've got something inside there rather than buying anything. So this is a creme fraiche tub and it has some soil in. Um, this is a yogurt tub which has some soil in. Now the soil inside is not too bad but you need to make sure if you're digging from your garden that you try and crumble it up a little bit so it's not too clumpy um, and that will help when we get to the stage of um, planting our seeds. So I'll move these over there. Um, I have two plates here with some kitchen towel on top so they're ready to capture the seeds. And I have a little chopping board which I can't tip up because I'll lose my tomato so I'll do that. I have a chopping board uh, with a serrated knife um, which um, will help when you're trying to um, cut into a tomato because tomatoes are round so they're like spheres, it's a math lesson as well, and they'll roll about a bit. So if you have a serrated knife um, and make sure you have a grown up with you as well, they're an important part of your equipment, um, if you have a serrated knife it will um, cut through the tomato much cleaner. So you will need to slice your tomato in half and then scoop the seeds out um, too. So let me just see if I can lean this down so you can see it there. So um, I've done um, my homework here. I've got all my equipment ready. You will also need a teaspoon, um, and I'll tell you why soon. And you've got your serrated knife, um, and I have two um, types of tomato. So I've already chopped into this tomato, so I'll show you how to get the seeds out. Um, you can use um, a spoon, or you can use um, something not so... Um, round but whichever you find easier to scoop out the seeds which I'm going to put onto this plate here just like so and you can see them blob out and when you're doing it and um, the gloopy bits will come up as well um, and it will be this is what we're going to use our spoon the back of our spoon for so I'm scooping out my tomato seeds there like so and it's exactly the same process to use with your cherry tomato. They look exactly the same, even though they're different types of tomato. All of the seeds will look the same size. And you'll see some that I've done earlier as well. So now, um, I don't know if you can see that. Oops, so on this plate here, um, you can see all of the seeds and the, the gloop. But you need to try and separate the seeds from the gloop. And an easy way to do this is to put a little bit of kitchen towel down to pick up your seeds. Just like this. And just by laying it in, it's quite a lot of gloop, but it's just to get as much of the moisture out as you can. And then when they're on that, you can use the back of your spoon to try and separate. See, so one automatically came away then. Try and separate your seeds from the gloop as best you can. So I've got one there that came away straight away. And you can do that just by rubbing your back of your spoon over your seed like so. It's not the end of the world if you can't get all of the gloop off and um, there's no issues with any of the growing but I think it's just of impact if you want to try and use the seeds again and um, if um, there's too much gloop apparently they don't germinate but 
sometimes you have seeds which are already germinating inside the tomato and you'll be able to see little sprouts coming off of them and um, there's none in this tomato unfortunately um, but it won't harm them if there's a little tiny bit of glue so you separate it as much as possible on your kitchen towel so you've got some seeds there and then you leave them on your kitchen towel for a couple of hours until they dry and I did this earlier so I have here I'm trying to pick this up carefully this is the kitchen towel that I had earlier these are my salad seeds for my salad tomato here and I also have the seeds on a separate piece of kitchen towel for my cherry tomato and as you can probably see although there's very slight change in the color and um, the actual size of the seeds is the same so move this bit out of the way so you can see them there so hopefully you can see the little dots and in this salad tomato I have there's lots of seeds in there because it's much bigger than a cherry tomato but I have one two three four five six tomato seeds on the salad kitchen towel and one two three four five six seeds on the cherry tomato so I have an even number of seeds which I can now plant into the, the pots now, as I said earlier, hopefully these are things that you will have in your fridge. Hopefully you've got tomatoes in your fridge, but you could use any fruit which has seeds to do this. Um, someone suggested that I could do um, strawberries because on the back of your strawberry on the outside there, all of these little dots are the seeds. Um, and I might use that as my next experiment at home because if you leave these to dry, if you leave them out in a dry, warm room for a few days, um, then the seeds start to raise and then they're easy to scrape off again with the back of the spoon. So I am going to now harvest, um, I've harvested my seeds rather, and now I'm going to plant them. So in my yogurt pot, I'm going to plant, this is part of my experiment, but I need to write it on little labels so that you can remember, because you might not remember. So in my yogurt pot, I'm going to plant my salad seeds. Now, just with my fingers, because I've washed my hands anyway, you can just put your finger inside and just make a little hole and then drop your seed in. Ooh, it's going for the wrong one then. So I'm going for, this one is the cherry seeds. So I'm only going to plant three in this little pot, um, just because if I do three in each pot, there's enough space for them. Now, as long as you've put your finger right down, um, it's probably up to up to your knuckle, maybe. I know my finger's probably a bit bigger than yours. Um, and then drop it in. Um, and just cover it over slightly just by rubbing it over very, very gently. And it needs to be quite loose. This soil here that I've got is, is quite loose soil and um, it's been really well crumbled. So there's no, there's very few clumps inside there. Um, and it needs to be quite light because um, you don't want too much pressure on the top so that the um, seedlings can't pop up. So I have planted in my yogurt pot the um, cherry tomatoes. I need to do wrong then. I think I have. So I'm going to leave my cherry label just on the top there for a second. Now I have, before I planted anything, should have said, made some holes in the bottom of my pot. So that should be the first thing you do when you get all your equipment together. Just put some holes in, and um, and that's so that when you then water your tomato plant and pop it on a plate, the water can go through, and it won't just sit in the pot. So now in my creme fraiche pot, I'm going to put the salad tomato. So again, I'm just going to use my finger. Just gently make a hole, or three. And I'm going to put three seeds in there, in those holes. Quite little, stuck in my nails. So I've put three seeds in there. Oh, I dropped it. Just three seeds in there. And then I'm just going to gently cover over, wobble the compost over onto the top there. And then I'm going to water that. So. I have in that one my salad tomato and in the other one my um, yogurt pots I have my cherry tomatoes and it'll be really interesting to see um, where I can put them. I think they need to go into a sunny spot. I know when we did our science in class and um, we worked out that to help things grow they need sunshine, water, what else do they need? be really interesting if you can remember that. Uh, we need to, you don't have to sing to them, but I might sing to mine. Um, you can talk to your plants. Apparently that helps them to grow taller as well. Um, but this is a little experiment which I'm going to now hope that they come and come up in about three to five days. So I'm going to do a second part of this video so that I can show you any of the shoots, the shoots coming through. That's hard to say. But I'm just going to go water these now and come back to you in a few days. Thank you. Hope you're staying safe. See you soon.